gentlemen, please welcome Brian Stevens. Uh, good morning. Um, so in a couple months, it marks my 10-year anniversary at Red Hat. And to be honest, it seems like forever, but um, to be honest, um, you know, what brought me there wasn't some great product that Red Hat had. It wasn't some great technology. It was the brand. You know, I, from the outside, the Red Hat brand was so huge to me 10 years ago that I wanted to be a part of it. And it was the belief that open source and open source collaboration was gonna, could have a transformative impact on how future open source and applications are developed and in so doing on information technology in general. And so last night and during the day, just the conversations that I've had with people at the summit has, has made me more inspired today than I was 10 years ago. Because you know, what you realize really quickly is it's not just an isolated vision anymore on the future of open source. It's a really shared vision. So it's really cool. So you know, I wanted to just take a minute to thank you. I want to thank you know, Red Hat Associates, you know, past, present, and future. I want to thank our customers, our partners, other open source developers, because you know, it's really all of us that are moving this, this platform forward. So I'm old enough. Remember when this was the legacy, systems like this were the legacy? Um, this is actually from 1985, and it's a VAX 8600 at, at Digital. And it was one of the, um, I hate to say it was one of the first uh, servers that I worked at for, on a company. Um, all 12.5 megahertz. Um, the black and white doesn't help. I mean, it doesn't do it justice. It's really not as old as it looks. Um, but now here's the new legacy. These guys' son left this behind from last century. Um, and, but, but to be honest, this was before open source was prevalent in the enterprise. But, and you had to feel for the sysadmins that were managing these boxes, right? These guys were managing these closed systems with a closed set of APIs around these systems with a really limited set of tools that weren't flexible. But you know, eventually it came. It came in the way of open source, and it empowered these guys. It, was, it came in the way of Linux. Linux is now 20 years old. It came in the way of Apache, MySQL, PHP, the proverbial LAMP stack. And it made these guys smile, right? It turned these guys into data center heroes. So they took those old data centers, these bus bar filled data centers of the 80s, and they're, they're turning them into these green data centers that are, the, the, that are gonna be the legacy of, of the new century. And of course, they found a partner in Red Hat. Um, but you know, it, you know, it's a great partnership. But with IT, if you're if you're a software vendor with IT, it's not at all about resting on your laurels. It's not about what you did for them yesterday. It's about what have you done for me lately. So at Red Hat, we're going to continue to feed their need for speed with things like virtualization and clustering, elastic data grids and in-memory databases, provisioning tools and security solutions, ESBs and messaging and application servers. So, but the arrival of open source software has, has had a profound impact on more than just the sysadmin. It's actually had a profound impact on developers as well. So, you know, like me, if you were a developer of, of 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, and if you listen to these developers, the stuff they were talking about was very different. You'd hear them talking about things like two-phase commit, indirect addressing, you know, lack and yaks, um, Malix and freeze, but no more. Now when you go, go over to JudCon, go over and talk to developers that are getting started today. You're not gonna hear those terms anymore. You're gonna hear HTML5, you're gonna hear RESTful interfaces, um, CDI, uh, key value pairs. So, and these guys too, the developers also have this massive toolkit, just like this is admins, and their toolkits lives in places like RubyForge and GitHub, SourceForge, in our own JBoss community. Um, you know, so while, the, while these new admins were off turning off and s these uh, Spark servers and all the new developers were sunsetting these millions of lines of code to COBOL, something else was going on. So open source was, was, was creating a paradigm shift. It was powering the next generation of, of inf information technology through the way of cloud. So, you know, being part of Red Hat, you get exposed to a lot of really cool stuff. And one of the highlights for me is that in 2006, I met these two young software pioneers, and these guys actually lived in, in Cape Town, South Africa. And so these guys um, actually worked for a book tailor at the time, and they had this great idea, I mean, at a book tailor. They had a great idea that, hey, how can we take our internal infrastructure and expose it on demand for users? And they actually called the physical servers that were part of uh, this, this grid system um, droplets. 
So, you know, they sent a, you know, Red Hat, they sent me an email about this project and how, you know, Red Hat could collaborate. It was a great idea and there's a way that we could you know, like really build this great partnership. And um, internally, um, at this book tailor, they actually called it a, a Skunkworks project. But out of this Skunkworks project and these two pioneers, EC2 was born. And so, Chris and Willem, you know, the, the founders of EC2 are now continuing their pioneering ways over at a company called Nimbula. So in the five years that followed that, open source has transformed from a single implementation of a cloud, a single instance of EC2, into a whole cloud industry, where now seemingly every major cloud is powered by open source. IBM, NTT, Salesforce, Rackspace, Fujitsu, except for that one up in Redmond, Washington, right? And so I don't know where the phrase comes of eating your own dog food, but I wouldn't be surprised if it came from there. So the toolkit of the sysadmin and developer just got massively larger, right? Infinite infrastructure on demand. So just like with open source, whoop, I got ahead of them. I let them catch up. Without the visuals, it's nothing. <laughs> it's just talk. There we go. Um, so just like with open source, though, the, the adoption of cloud is viral, right? So it's not something that's planned by the CIO. It's just developers are using it, right? So they, now a developer before, you know, you had to work for Intel or these national labs to have access to, like, large computers and, and these clusters. But now everybody has access to this infinite scale on demand. So garage shops, companies starting out of garages, have all of a sudden infinite infrastructure. You know, these developers that perhaps are creating, you know, the next Etsy or Groupon or even a Zynga. Startups, you know, startups aren't buying racks of hardware anymore. They can put their whole web presence in the cloud and all their application logic in the cloud. You know, they, they often talked about, you know, startup, a big part of starting a company is, is, is the amount of seed money it takes to get it going. It used to be in the millions just to get started. Now these guys are doing it on 50K of capital expenditures because of cloud computing. And of course, large enterprises are taking advantage of it. It's for everybody. Developers, testers, analytics, and way more. So as much infrastructure as you need, or as little, little infrastructure as you need, and when you need it. So you know, the profiles of all these people are not unlike the 1,000 plus developers at Red Hat. So these guys, you know, they have the intellectual capital, they have the open source toolkit, and they create emerging technologies, and they gravitate towards emerging technologies wherever they're created. But in sort of trying to use the early stages of cloud computing, they realized that, you know what, it could be a lot easier, and it could be a lot more seamless. So we had this idea. So the idea was, how do we create our own developers this really easy on-ramp to use the public cloud? And then, of course, that's backwards thinking. So instead, we said, OK, serve yourself. So you guys create yourself this easy on-ramp to use the public cloud. So out of this, um, an internal project at Red Hat was called Project Libra was formed. And it wasn't out of some planning room and product manager. It was just out of this need. It was out of this, this just this thirst and this belief that we could make a foundational change in how you develop, build, deploy, and manage software. You know, so how do you create this, you know, the zero friction, this frictionless environment to use the public cloud? And not just one public cloud. It's got to be any public cloud, because they're all going to be different, and they're all going to innovate, and you want to take advantage of all of them creating and launching applications seamlessly, quickly, easily. So our early work for this has centered around Git. And so Git is this um, distributed source code management. And Git was actually invented by an open source developer named Linus Torvalds because you know, here Linux is this project that's highly scalable and there's a lot, of large, a lot of contributors. And he needed a source code management system that allowed these contributors all over the world to share their branches of software. So, Obviously, that SCM was quickly adopted inside of Red Hat because not just our participa participation in Linux, but just our, you know, the way we work on open source and collaboration is part of our DNA. So the idea was that you, know, you take Git and you take the, what our existing developers are using for managing software, and you don't add new complexity for them to be able to use the public cloud. It's as simple as a Git push. So instantly, they're making their code changes to Git, they do a Git push, and their application is up and running on a public cloud. So, so what are they not doing? They're no longer thinking about packaging software. They're no longer thinking about porting software to another cloud. They're not thinking about 
How do I log into some API at some cloud? How do I transfer my software up there? How do I deploy my software? How do I configure my software? They don't think about any of that. You know what they think about? They think about coding. So, you know, this, our own Skunkworks project, Libra, has grown up just enough. You know, we're, now we want to share it. So we're sharing it, you know, with the outside world because there's a lot of other open source developers that we think have the same challenges that we do. And so we're, cha we're sharing it and we're going to share Libra under the, uh, under the banner of OpenShift. So here is Mike McGrath. Mike McGrath, um, you know, he was, he, he's got an amazing track record at Red Hat. He manages this worldwide collaboration around Fedora infrastructure. It's a pretty involved project of, of managing all the infrastructure behind the Fedora project. And so, I mean, I think I spent two years trying to recruit this guy to do this project. Um, and so he finally agreed. Didn't know what I was talking about, I swear to God. But man, this guy's a rock star. And he has made his mark on OpenShift. And so here he is to talk to you about how easy it is to stand up an application. Hi, my name is Mike McGrath. I am a cloud architect at Red Hat. And I've spent the last several months working on a really interesting project called OpenShift. And I've been focusing on a, a subset of that uh, called Express, which focuses on being able to easily onboard PHP, uh, Ruby, and Python applications via standard open interfaces. So basically, the first thing you have to do when you want to create an application is pick a name for it. So we'll call it uh, Demo1. Uh, to create the app, you just run RHC, create app, and then you pick the, the framework that you're going to use. For this, we use PHP. The client tools are now going out to the server. Uh, they're trying to find an open node in which to create this application. And once that's done, the client software will download a templated repo that contains the actual application. And it'll print the Git repository and the HTTP location. In this case, you can see the HTTP location is here. We can see that the blank application has been created. It's also created a local directory on my system that I can go into and make changes. So we'll go ahead and change the main home page and we'll put a simple PHP info. To make the changes that I've made locally go live, all I have to do is run a git push and it automatically pushes those changes back up to the remote repo. At which point in time all I have to do is go back to my web browser, refresh, and you can see that the new changes are live. If we take a closer look at our uh, locally created Git repo, we can see that there is published data in the PHP directory, but also libraries and other things that we would like to keep private. If I need to do something else like uh, restart it or any of that, I can use the RHC CTL app command uh, with dash A demo one dash C restart to restart the command. It goes out, contacts our service and restarts it. You can see that it's still accessible. And then the last two things I'm gonna show you are a simple snapshot using the RHC snapshot command. This pulls down uh, a remote snapshot, including all the logs, any databases that have been created, those things, into a tarball on my local machine. It functionally works just like a backup. And then the last thing I'm going to do is clean up our app. I mean, we'll destroy it, again, with the RHC CTL app command. After a quick warning to make sure I do want to destroy it, it goes out and it's destroyed. I can refresh on the browser and see that it no longer exists. I hope this has been interesting enough to you that you'll go out and try it. Uh, just go to openshift.redhead.com and give it a try. So that's OpenShift Express. So it's a service created by open source developers for open source developers. So in under 10 seconds, making it trivial for an application to be synchronized from your Git repo to the public cloud. So today we're going to support, at launch, we launched this yesterday, we're going to support Ruby, PHP, Python, and, and hopefully a few short weeks, Java. Um, but it's beyond just expanded language support for, for Express, um, there's some other cool features that are coming. Like one of the things is we're going to put uh, um, continuous integration behind the scenes. And so what that means is that as developers are making changes to their Git repo, those changes are constantly vetted against a set of extensible test cases. And there's a lot of other things as well. So the world of storing data for applications isn't just about SQL anymore. So we're going to support a range of options from, from SQL to NoSQL. You know, we talked about Elastic Data Grid, um, JBoss announcement yesterday, as well as file-based uh, storage services. So, and the best part about it is open source is free, and not just free as an open source, but free as in beer. 
And so all we, we want to make it as easy as possible for you to sign up and join and start to actually create some apps. All we need is your email address, and that's, that's what your account ID is. Um, but it's evolving really rapidly, right? We're just getting started with this thing. So all we ask um, in turn is that there's a, there's a set of forums associated with this thing is that you guys help us um, you know, influence the, the evolution of it. So you know, it's not just about Red Hat already. Already we've you know, started to engage with some partners. And there's this one partner, Accelerator, And these guys do an awesome job. And they build IDEs to make it really easy for developers to build mobile applications. Uh, so they've already taken the IDE that they have, and they've integrated it with the OpenShift Cloud. And so now developers can actually build mobile applications for, for, for you know, smartphones, iOS, Android, or even an iPad. And they can build a local application, but also seamlessly they can build a cloud-based service that that application might depend on. Today I'm going to demo how you can quickly build and deploy mobile cloud applications using Titanium and Red Hat's OpenShift platform. So to get started, I'm going to bring up Titanium Studio. This is the IDE that you use to build native desktop and mobile applications using the Titanium SDK. So to get started, I'm going to first build a, uh, or create a, a Titanium mobile project. So you can see here I can do desktop or mobile. So I'm going to do mobile. And I'll give it a name, just call it Red Hat Client. Give it an app ID and a URL. You can also see here deployment targets. I can choose iPhone, iPad, or Android. I'm going to do iPhone and Android. And for this project, I actually created a, a template app. So I'm going to select my geolocation um, mobile client that uh, I'm going to use just to make the demo go a little bit smoother and faster. So let's go ahead and create that. So basically all that is doing is it's creating a, a new Titanium mobile project with some template code. So if I open up my project here on the left, you can see it's got my template code, my app.js, and my utils.js. So this is the code I created for this demo. So we can close that. And so the next step is actually to create the uh, Red Hat server project. So to do that, we added the ability to create a Red Hat pro project. Um, you can choose from three languages. And I'm going to choose uh, PHP. And now I need to create a namespace. And so now it's just provisioning my uh, namespace in my account. So I'll just call this Red Hat server. And I also have a server template that I'm going to use for this demo. So it's, it's actually the PHP uh, server to my client, so I'll just select that, and now I'm going to create my project. And so now what it's doing is it's creating my project and then checking in and pushing it to the Red Hat Cloud. So here you can see one of the things we did in the uh, integration is once we're done deploying to your namespace, it gives us the URL, so it just opens up a browser window to the URL where my actual server is deployed. So you can see my server is deployed at at the project name dash the namespace, so Nolan Server Red Hat Cloud. So I'm, I'm all good. So actually now, my PHP project, which is here, you can see here, it's actually checked in and sitting on the Red Hat cloud. It's a very simple service, just handles a git or a post. So now, let's, uh, since it's live, the first thing I need to do is go into my client code and change the URL. So that's in here. So if you remember my URL to my service is this, so I'll take that. And then I'll go back here, and I've got a couple places I need to change it. My default URL is localhost, so I just need to Search for a couple of those and switch them out, and that one here. So now my client code is hitting the proper URL in the cloud to access its services, so we save that. And now let's launch the simulator. So my demo app actually uses geolocation, so it's going to ask me if I can use uh, my location, and the answer is yes. And you can see it saved my location. And so my client code got my location and sent it to the server, saved it, and then got a success back, and then you see this location saves alert. That's kind of the end of the demo, but you can see how quickly you're able to build mobile cloud applications using Titanium and Red Hat's OpenShift platform. So OpenShift Express, you know, cool for developers, but what about another set of people that actually want to take production-level apps and run them on the public cloud? So these guys think differently. So they think about how do I deliver a service-level agreement to the users of that application. So they have to worry, they have a, an additional set of worries over the developer. They have to worry about things like, can I reliably, repeatedly deploy my application, configure my application? Once my application's up and running, is it performing properly? They worry about things like, can my application handle the scale? And when you're built on Amazon or another cloud, you have all these resources underneath you. So you want to make sure that your, your application can scale out as user load requires and then scale back in accordingly. 
Um, so we actually bought a company called Makera last year to handle just this use case. And so now Makera has become part of the OpenShift platform. And we actually call it Flex. So it's OpenShift Flex. So with OpenShift Flex, now you can take these multi-tier applications, applications that are built around you know, web server application logic and a data store, and you can deploy them easily to the production, to a, uh, at a production level service in the cloud. And it has, it has all the services built into it that you know, deliver elasticity. So now the developers with this no longer have to think about things like you know, packaging, provisioning, how do I deploy my monitoring infrastructure? How do I deal with managing the scale? All that's happened for them by the, you know, the OpenShift Flex platform. So Isaac Ross. Isaac Ross was the CEO of Makara, so he's already had this vision. He's now joined Red Hat through the acquisition, and he's going to show you um, how he puts Flex through the paces. With OpenShift Flex, you deploy your application onto one of our supported Red Hat certified cloud providers, and you use your own account. So if you have your account already wired up to your corporate data center over VPN, the PaaS becomes an extension of your corporate network. That's already cool flexibility. Using the PaaS, developers can self-service deploy applications to the cloud in minutes. Here I'm uploading code from the command line. I choose the middleware I want to run from the library of Red Hat, Partner, and Open Source components. For example, here I'm choosing JBoss Application Server, Apache, a NoSQL database, and a cache. After I've configured my application stack, I can configure each of the application components. For example, here I'm going to set up Apache rewrite rules. Then here I can look at the files that are part of the application, which I previously uploaded. Uh, the application has access to a distributed file system, so certain files in certain directories are available on all the servers in the cluster, and this is a unique feature for a platform as a service. Once I have my application configured and deployed, and it's working well, I can migrate the application from one set of servers to another, or one server cluster to another. This enables me to promote things from, let's say, staging into production, or from a development environment into a staging environment. In that migration, there was an upgrade to MySQL, which I just made by selecting a new version on the components page. Other things built into the platform as a service are comprehensive performance monitoring. Here at the top, I have a selectable time scale where I can move around in time, and we store two years' worth of data. And I've got a palette of different metrics on the right here that I can drag onto my workspace. For example, here I'm looking at the amount of memory used across the cluster during this time period. And up at the top here, there are change markers where something was changed. For example, there's where the application was restarted, and here's where the application was redeployed. Probably the most interesting graph here is this one called transaction times by component. You can see this is a graph of how long it takes to process and serve different sets of URLs that are being serviced by the platform as a service. So if I mouse over here, you can see this is time to download the page to the user, time to get it to the browser, time spent in the web server and app server and database. If I want to compare before and after a certain event, I can hit this to button and I get a second time window. And moving this to a time next to the other, I can see what the performance was like before and after this change event in the two colors here, blue and green. Finally, for monitoring, or if anything goes wrong and you need to debug, all the logs from all the components and the application across all the servers in the various clusters are collected on this one screen. And the same thing, you navigate with this time selector at the top. You have all the different log entries here. Uh, some filters on the left, and you can even do free text filtering. So for example, I'm going to search for anything containing this error message. And there we have selected only the log entries that contain that message. So OpenShift Flex, so making it easier for developers when things get a little bit more serious in managing their applications. But it also provides this great on-ramp for enterprise users that actually want to manage production-level apps very seamlessly in the cloud today. So I think we all know this. Open source has this unparalleled ecosystem of application components. Right? So as part of the OpenShift platform, we'll take those application components and we'll package them up so that they're easily consumable by developers using both Flex and Express. Um, 
So the application components will be everywhere from you know, bleeding edge components that have just been developed in new releases all the way to the ones that are hard and stable and ready for enterprise. And they'll, they'll, they'll span the, the capability from things like you know, caching all the way to elastic data grids through database. Um, and it's not just about Red Hat. So Red Hat's not going to be the only one extending the OpenShift platform. You know, it'll be us, it'll be open source developers, but we'll, we'll have a set of partners as well. So there's already some really cool commercial companies that have engaged with us on the OpenShift platform and, all, and are already extending the application logic that the new developers of OpenShift can take advantage of. What's exciting about OpenShift is that it's a completely open and configurable platform. So developers can deploy their app on top of OpenShift and if they need to in the future, they'll be able to move it to another platform without having to completely re-architect their application. With OpenShift, they can get a lot of uh, the benefits of getting automation um, and some levels of, of platform management out of OpenShift, but still get the flexibility of building and deploying and managing their own stack. So it kind of uh, combines the best of both worlds. Well, I think OpenShift is extremely important. There is a lot of movement in the industry you know, towards passes, but in order for a pass to be, uh, to be uh, successful, I think it is important that you know, enterprise-grade companies support it. So the fact that Red Hat comes out with OpenShift is extremely important because it will make enterprises feel comfortable about the fact that there's a real company behind this that understands enterprises. And so it will lower the threshold for enterprises to, uh, to use and start you know, working with, with, a, with a pass. If you have mission-critical applications with real traffic in production, you can't be dealing with the stack you absolutely need to use a scalable cloud application platform. Red Hat's OpenShift Flex platform gave us the choice of stack that we needed. We staged a pilot project where over 40 organizations in Belgium and the Netherlands test collective access on an OpenShift Flex cluster and it worked great. We are really impressed how easy it is to build a cluster in the cloud with a Red Hat OpenShift Flex platform. You have direct access to the deployment, deployment platform. You don't have to go through an IT ops you know, team and then they will ask you many things about how you should package your stuff and, and so on. Here it's, it's really direct. You have an access to those APIs and you push that and it's a question, it's not a question of minutes, it's a question of seconds. Cotendo is all about um, acceleration and we have a cloud acceleration services for web and for mobile. And we are very excited to be part of the Red Hat um, uh, OpenShift ecosystem. We believe that's the right path. We believe that um, us being part of this um, uh, project is uh, important for us as well as important for, for, the, uh, for the audience. And we are delighted to be here. And we all care about speed and making a high performance. You know, with this cloud offering, it's huge for us. And it's, it's actually enabled us to create a fully integrated solution where as a mobile developer, I can create my mobile application, but I can also create the cloud part of my application. And then I can, through basically a one-click deployment, I can push that out to the cloud, and then I can run my mobile app, it's hitting the cloud. You know, this, happen, this can all happen in a matter of minutes. That's a huge opportunity. It solves a huge problem for developers because you know, today it's, it's, they're disconnected. Like I kind of have to solve the problems individually. And I think our work with Red Hat is great because it brings, it brings two really important things together in one integrated solution. And so we do it by what we call a cartridge model. So OpenShift supports this cartridge model, and that's how these, this application logic of ourselves and these partners are packaged up so that it's really easy for developers, whether they're developers using Express or developers using uh, Flex can take advantage of them. Um, so at Red Hat and, and I think industry-wide, we often talk about now how open source has enabled the public cloud. So was, as we built the OpenShift platform, we wanted to take a couple of minutes to talk about you know, how we build it and how the, the key op underlying open source technologies to make it happen. But in doing so, when you're designing a new platform, you have some design tenants. So our first design tenant was make it frictionless. So the, the end goal was make it trivial for an application developer to be able to seamlessly integrate the public cloud, to be able to stand up their app, and every time they make a change to their app, it's instantly available on the cloud. So second was make it fast, because if it's not fast, developers are going to go elsewhere. So our goal was sub 10 seconds for every time you made a code change to your Git repo, that that, app, that change was synchronized on the, on the running public cloud. And third was make it ultra secure, because now these apps aren't running inside your IT department anymore. These apps are running on a multi-tenant cloud that's publicly accessible. 
and four was consistent performance because what good is an application that's running if it has really spotty performance? And now that you're running on a multi-tenant multi cloud, the, your ability to influence performance on the actual physical server is very limited. Five is you know, remove the pain, right? There's a lot of pain right now as you take an application and you want to move it to the next cloud. Maybe the next cloud offers better performance, lower cost, better security models, better, better um, locality to where your business is. Right? So we wanted to remove as much pain as possible from the application developers to get that app to the next cloud. And six was make it free. So again, free not just as an open source, but free as in beer. So we achieved all these design tenets by building on this integrated open source architecture. Um, and so the users don't see it, but what's behind the scenes, behind the OpenShift cloud, and what is cool about it is the first time that, you know, as Red Hat, we spent all this time working on technologies that we think are important, talking to our customers around why we think they're compelling for them, helping them deploy it. For the first time, not only were we the developer of these technologies, but we're actually the recipient. So it was really awesome. So the users don't see what's behind the OpenShift cloud, but what's behind it are things like RHEL 6. So we started with RHEL 6, and so RHEL 6 delivers, you know, this great environment for reliable application performance, super secure, really dense. We can pack a lot of applications in um, and really guarantee a, a really consistent response time. Things like SE Linux, because we're in that multi-tenant environment now, and we want to make sure that when an application is running on RHEL 6, that that application, um, if something happens and that application is compromised, that that application can't compromise other applications on the cloud. Right? So SE Linux is a key part of that, has been for RHEL for a long time. It's the same technology that the NSA uses to handle a similar set of use cases. Things like C groups, and C groups was designed for how do you actually create a policy so you can actually dedicate a set of resources to an application, a set of resources like in terms of how much I/O, how much memory, and how much CPU you want that application to have. And so through through C groups, we can actually dedicate those resources to an application and ensure that it has that consistent response time um, as user load increases, even if other things are happening on the system and on the cloud. Um, containers for lightweight private namespaces. Um, and Delta Cloud, we've talked about Delta Cloud for years, um, and it's great to finally be a recipient of using Delta Cloud. Delta Cloud is like that key API that we can use as that integration point. So as we want to make the OpenShift platform support other clouds besides Amazon, Delta Cloud is the key way that we'll be able to do that. And then, and then lastly, JBoss is a huge thing. JBoss delivers you know, the most reliable platform for running Java bar none. And so as we bring Java to the OpenShift Cloud, that's through JBoss. And in addition to, as we add even more application servers for developers, whether those developers are developing in Ruby, PHP, Python, or Java, we'll use a lot of the key capability inside of the JBoss portfolio to deliver those application level services. So obviously we're a little bit enthusiastic about um, you know, working on this stuff inside of Red Hat for a long time and now actually getting to share it and, and, and talk about it. Um, and we had a briefing with Travelers Insurance on the OpenShift platform and we wanted to let you hear their thoughts. The focus of any cloud should really be the applications that are running on it, not the infrastructure that it's sitting on. Um, if we turn that around and focus on the infrastructure, we get really great infrastructure, but nothing runs. So we really need to focus on what is the need, what is the application that needs to run, and make sure that that's able to be configured and monitored and tracked and built in a way that takes advantage of the cloud, but is not necessarily based on the cloud. The roadmap on, on cloud that, that Red Hat provides emphasizes flexibility and flexibility of being able to switch things in and out of our infrastructure is, is key to us. Red Hat appears to understand the problem space, which is important to us. Um, it's important that anyone that's going to be working with us to provide a solution understands the core issues that come in with, with the cloud impl implementation, particularly at a large enterprise. We want to implement something that's actually gonna save us money, that's actually going to be stable, that's actually going to allow us to beat out our competitors on cost. That's what cloud is to us. It's the opportunity for us to be better than our competitors. So with the OpenShift platform, we're taking the complexity of managing software and all the underlying infrastructure and middleware away. We're melting it away so that, so that developers and the operators of the applications don't have to think about it anymore. And so all they have to think about right now is writing code and their strategic mission, their applications. So if you, if you didn't get an opportunity yesterday to go visit the Cloud Cafe, out there are a lot of cloud partners at Red Hat and partners around OpenShift. You'll also be able to not just see an OpenShift demo, 
that you saw here, you can actually see a, a live running instance of, of OpenShift. Um, and so, you know, participate, go see it, but also, when, you know, once you get out of here, um, you can actually go to openshift.redhat.com and you can start moving your applications to the public cloud today. And, you know, just in closing, I just wanted to thank you once again because, you know, the same way we designed this, there's a whole forum around OpenShift because it's not just around where Red Hat wants to take the platform, the forum is open because we want, you know, massive involvement and in sort of where the developers and end users of this want to actually take it. So thank you very much.